Hi, welcome to another IFR video. This time I'm going to show you how to load an RNAV star into the 430W, then load the ILS approach that goes with it, and then close the star. So for uh, this particular example, we're, we're going to begin with a flight plan from Castlegar to Abbotsford. I've started the process already, so CYCG, the Castlegar Airport. LOCAM, the first waypoint on the airway, YDC, the Princeton VOR. Next we're heading for HOPE. So we enter HE for HOPE. Check the latitude and longitude. And then just simply put in the Abbotsford Airport. So CYXX. Now, by the way, I'm using here some software that I downloaded off the Garmin website. It's free of charge, so anyone can download this particular software and use it. Uh, the database that comes in this particular software is a couple of years out of date, uh, but that's okay because this is just all about process here today, showing you how to do things. It doesn't matter uh, terribly much if if this doesn't match up exactly with current IFR charts. Okay, so what we have now here is just a basic flight plan uh, from Castlegar to Abbotsford, and this is something that you might store in the the Garmin's memory. So f for many instances, this would actually be your starting point. So to begin from here, then we're going to insert the uh, the star. So we hit the procedure button. And we want to select an arrival, so we highlight that. And the particular arrival that we're going to enter is called the Harris 1 arrival, which is pretty much the same as the current HOPE star. So we're going to look here at the HOPE approach plate. And of course, that wouldn't be satisfactory for real world flying. But anyway, as I said, we're just showing you the process. So first thing I want you to notice, we've got some discontinuities now in our flight plan because of the way we set it up. We've got HOPE here twice, and in fact the flight plan goes from the HOPE NDB uh, to the Abbotsford Airport, so the bearing 222, 42.8 miles. Uh, the GPS is going to want to to take you from the HOPE Beacon over to the HOPE Airport, and then this next leg down here uh, 041 and 42.8 miles, it wants to turn you around and bring you back up to Hope. So we don't want any of that. We need to delete these two legs up here at the end of our en route portion. It's quite common that you need to do that if you have a stored flight plan. So those two legs need to go. Now our en route portion ends at YDC, Princeton VOR, and from there the track 253, 41.2 miles, takes us directly to Hope and we're straight into the star. So that's looking good. Now as we scroll down through the rest of the star we should be checking all these bearings and distances. I'm not going to do that today because let's face it it's not even an exact match to my approach plate although it is actually pretty close. But what I want you to notice here is Omino. That's the downwind termination waypoint and Icurry is the final approach course fix and that's the last waypoint in the uh, the star that we entered but notice this course of 0, 070 degrees now that's not the bearing from Omino to Icurry so what exactly is this 0, 070? well the 0, 070 is the runway heading runway 07 so this is the course that the Garmin is going to set up for you to be vectored to intercept to Icurry. In other words, the Garmin has established this star in the open format, as though you're going to be vectored from Amino to Icurry. But we're here to learn how to close it. Okay, so the first step to closing it is to insert the approach. So we hit the procedure button, and we're going to select an approach this time. So we hit enter, ILS 07, and we get three options. Now there's only one rule here, and the rule is never pick the vectors option if you want to close the star. So we can pick either of these other two options, White Rock or Abbotsford. They'll bo both work fine. Uh, I've done this a few times before, so I happen to know that picking White Rock is a little easier. So we're going to go with the White Rock option. 
So we select White Rock. Do we want to load it or activate it? In this case, we only want to load it. So we select that and enter. Now let's have a look and see what we've got. So again, at the end of our star, we've got the downward termination waypoint amino. We've got iCurry. Then here comes the approach. Let's have a look and see what we've got. we got White Rock. We've, oh, we've got iCurry again. Look at that. Cool. So the bearing 250 to White Rock is, of course, from the first iCurry. It's going to take you over to White Rock. Well, we don't want to do that. So right off the bat, delete that. Gone. And now we've got iCurry twice. This is usually the situation, but in this particular instance, we've got uh, the first iCurry is at the end of the star up here, and the next one is at the beginning of the approach. The one you want to delete is the one at the, B, at the end of the star. Now, before I do that, let me just point out the bearing 342. That is the correct bearing from amino to I curry, but the distance zero is obviously not correct. It's being followed up by the existence of this waypoint. Now you can just leave it like this if you want until you get there and then decide which one to delete. But if you uh, are going to get vectors, you'll need to hit the procedure button and reload the vectors version of the approach. But in this case, we're just trying to close the star. So all we need to do is delete this one here, clear, enter, it's gone. Now notice what we've got from amino. Then we've got 338 to iCurry, that's perfect. And 4 miles, the, that's the distance from Amino to iCurry. And then the next leg is Abbotsford, the final approach fix, the bearing 067 and 6.8 miles. It's important to check this track as well. Of course, it's important to check them all. But this track here, the one to Abbotsford, is the one that will be fouled up if you made the mistake and picked the vectors option. That's why you don't want to pick the vectors option. Okay, so that was pretty easy, and we're good to go. Now let's uh, let's say all of a sudden we're we're en route to Abbotsford, and company calls and says, "Hey, don't go to Abbotsford anymore. We need you to go to Vancouver." Okay, so we're gonna clear this out, and uh, we don't need this arrival. We're not going to Abbotsford anymore. Let's get rid of that. How are we gonna get to Vancouver? Well, after Princeton, we have to go to Booth. Now, some people watching this who are real experts would say, you know, you really don't need to put Booth in there. And you are absolutely correct. I am deliberately putting this in so I can delete it in a minute just to show you that step in the process. If you really are that on the ball, then just don't put this in because you're just going to be deleting it in a minute. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put it in. And the reason why I uh, choose to do that is... I think that the flight plan that I'm going to have here in just a second, so I'm putting in Vancouver now, by the way, which is CYBR. Oops, there we go. Vancouver. So what we have here, this flight plan, is what I would typically keep stored in my Garmin as my standard uh, stored routing from Castlegar to Vancouver. So this would be my starting point to insert the star. I then select procedure. I'm going to select my arrival. And the uh, the star that we want that comes in uh, from there is the Canuck 9. So we select that. And let's say that runway 08 right is active today. So we'll select 08 right. And we'll load that in. Now let's have a look and see what we've got. Now, as I mentioned, we've got some redundancies here. We've got Booth in there twice, so we're going to clear out that first one that we never really need to put in to begin with, and we're going to clear out Vancouver. Uh, okay, so now the uh, the flight plan goes from Locan to Princeton, from Princeton directly to Booth, 260, 66 miles. We can check that on our en route chart, and that is correct. And then we would check all the bearings and distances all the way through the star. Once again, this particular star has been slightly changed since this database was set up. So here we are <clears throat> again at the end of the star. And Vinlo is the downward termination waypoint. And Bubble is the final approach course fix. 
So that looks good, but once again, we've got the bearing 084 degrees to Booble. And just as in the Abbotsford instance, that is not the bearing from Vinlo to Booble. That is the runway heading 084 for runway 08. So again, the uh, with a three mile leg, the, the Garmin is going to set you up a little three mile leg coming into Booble that the uh, controller could vector you to. So that's great if it's an open star, but we want to close it. So the first thing again, let's uh, enter the approach. So we can select an approach here and we want runway 08 right. And we get two, uh, two options. Remember what the rule is, don't pick vectors. So we're going to pick Booble. That's probably what we were going to pick anyway. So we pick Booble and uh, we just want to load it. So we load that in and we understand that we can't use the GPS for final approach fix guidance. Okay, let's have a look and see what we've got now. So you notice something interesting happened this time. Remember just a minute ago, Booble was right here at the end of the star. And as soon as we inserted the approach, the Garmin deleted that uh, booble that was at the end of the star. Well, that's pretty cool. Put it in here at the beginning of the approach, but it still put it in with the track 084 degrees and 3 nautical miles. So uh, we don't have an extra booble this time, but we still got the wrong booble because it's still set up right now. It's perfectly set up if you're going to do the open version of the star, but if we want to close it, this isn't going to work. So what we have to do is highlight Booble, and we're going to put an extra Booble in here. Okay, so Booble. Okay, so before we hit enter, we check the latitude and longitude against our chart. Looks good. And so we insert that. So now we've got two boobles here. Now the first one, you notice, we have the bearing 173 degrees and 5.4 miles. And that is the correct bearing and distance to close the star and fly from Vinlo to Booble. But the second one is still there with the bearing of 083 and 3 miles. We don't want that. So we need to delete that. So we hit clear, enter, and it's just as simple as that. There we are. And now we've got uh, the leg there to TAVP, which is the final approach course fix, 081, 10.3 miles. We can check that against our approach plate. That's good, and we're good to go. Uh-oh, company calls again, says, yeah, we changed our mind again, guys. We don't want you to go to Vancouver. Go to Victoria. So we're going to clear this out. and clear that out. Say, okay, how do we get to Victoria? I know how to get there. It's rather similar to going to Vancouver. We still need to go to Booth. So we're going to put Booth in again. Okay, and there we go, it's Booth, and this time instead of Vancouver Airport, we're going to put the Victoria Airport CYYJ. Okay, so once again, I've deliberately set up a flight plan as I imagine that you would keep typically stored in your Garmin 430, so this could be your starting point again for a trip from Castle Guard to Victoria. And uh, similar to before, we hit the Procedure button and we want to select an arrival. This time the name of the RNAV star is APAS, so we select that. We have two transitions, but the one we want is called STAVE, so we select that. And again, runway 09, because the wind is from the east everywhere today, so we have 09, we'll load that. And let's have a look and see what we've got. So our flight plan goes from Locan to Princeton to Booth to the Victoria Airport. Don't think we want that. Get rid of it. 
and then from booth it goes to state. So notice this time it wasn't redundant to have booth in there, so I'm glad I did put it in this time. And we can check uh, the bearing 221, 13.9 from booth to stave on our uh, chart and check all the rest of the bearings all the way through to, oh, isn't that interesting? Now, calq is the downwind termination waypoint. If you remember, on the two previous examples, the last waypoint at the end of the star was the final approach course fix. But in this case, the last waypoint is the downwind termination waypoint. Isn't that interesting? I wonder what difference that will make. Let's insert the approach. So we hit the procedure button. We're going to select an approach. We want runway 09. And you know the rule. Don't pick vectors. So we pick Branny. And of course, Branny is the final approach course fix. So let's see what happens when we select Branny. So we load that in and acknowledge that. And let's have a look and see what we've got. So we get all the way down to calculate our downwind termination waypoint. And then comes Branny. And look at that. We've got the bearing 178 degrees and 4 miles, and that is the closed bearing. So this time, we don't have to do anything. That was easy. So we're now done. I've shown you three different RNAV star loadings, three different uh, closings of RNAV stars, each one just subtly different than the time before. Notice that in every case, well, I guess except this last one, we never did see the final approach course fix twice, but in most cases you'll have to put that final approach course fix in a second time. Either you put it in or the uh, Garmin puts it in, and then you have to figure out which one to delete. If the uh, redundant one is at the end of the star, that's the one to go. If it's at the beginning of the approach, it's the second one you need to delete. and. Uh, that's all there is to it. So there's no substitution for practice. Remember, this particular piece of software that I'm using to, to show you is available free of charge on the Garmin website. So just download it, install it, and practice away. If you're one of my students, you have access to unlimited simulator time. So there's no substitution for getting in there and flying a whole bunch of RNAV stars until you become completely and totally comfortable with the process. Okay, see you next time.